newspaper news. New insights, new styles and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's November 23rd here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yoon, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Park ki Good morning. Happy Thursday, and Al Song. Hey. Now both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. The founder of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, has agreed to resign from the company after pleading guilty to violations related to money laundering on Tuesday. Chang Peng Zhao has to pay a 50 million US dollar fine alone. His former company, Binance, also has to pay a total of $4.3 billion in fines. Now, this is the largest penalty the U.S. Justice Department has ever collected from a criminal matter. Moving on, earlier this month, Japanese mayor of Tomakomai City, Hirofumi Iwakura, fainted at Incheon International Airport from a heart attack. Immediately, employees from the Korean airport practiced heart compression. Fortunately, Mayor Iwakura survived. For the past two weeks, he has been receiving treatment at Inhai University Hospital. He's finally finished all treatment and left the hospital on Tuesday and has since lauded Korea medical expertise. And staying with news here in South Korea, a civil servant has been penalized for posting a picture of himself on social media drinking while working overtime. The penalty he received is that he is limited from any chances of promotion for six whole months, and the picture shows a can of beer and a few budget-related documents. Since he uploaded this photo, it went viral, and some even reported him, which is why the district office investigated the case. And the civil servant explained that he was on his way home with a can of beer on his day off, but he remembered he had some work to do, which is why he went back to work. He added how he worked without drinking for an hour and then only took a little sip after being thirsty. Nonetheless, some netizens criticized this public officer for showing an inappropriate work ethic, and some even called for stronger penalties. So here in the studio, what was your initial reaction once you heard this story? I mean, his excuse, excuse seems a little weak compared to the seriousness <laughs> of the issue. He says, oh, I didn't drink, I just took a sip after, way yeah. later when I was a little thirsty. It sounds a little weak, but it's also really silly. I, why would you post something like this online? I think this current generation has a difficult time kind of navigating and deciphering what and what not to share online. And not that he should have been doing this in the first place, mm. but just uploading it as if it's something to kind of flaunt about, it's, it's not very wise. Mm. What were your thoughts about this, Kihun? You know, I remember saying, I don't do much social media mm -hmm. for many different reasons, and this is definitely one of them. <laughs> um, you have to expect the unexpected, both good and bad. Uh, posting almost everything you do has become such a common behavior among our generation. Yeah. And I think we sometimes forget uh, who we are exposing ourselves mm -hmm. to, and not everyone will be on our side. And there'll be a lot of people ready to hunt you down. And <laughs> <laughs> obviously the civil servants fault, it's, the civil servants fault for uploading where he was and what he was doing with a can of beer right. with those documents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it is his first offense and a six month limit from any promotion seems kind of fair for now. But I just hope this will help him kind of um, learn from his mistake and be a little more careful of what he uploads on social media because in the future, it could cost him his job. It could, it mm. definitely could, because as of now, he's only penalized with six months mm -hmm. of being refrained from promotion, but you'll never know what the penalties could be later. And that was our news feed for this Thursday. Let's now switch gears to our main discussion topic of the day. On a daily basis, we hear news stories about how hard it is for the average Korean to get by without feeling a burden in their pockets. Now this due to rising consumer prices amid record high inflation. Such an economic environment has definitely changed the way our generation spends and saves money. Here's my AI voice secretary with the details. Consumer prices have been on the rise in Korea. According to Statistics Korea, consumer prices rose 5.7% in October from a year ago. For six months straight, the on-year growth in consumer prices stayed above 5%. Working as the key gauge of inflation, high consumer prices resemble high living costs that take a toll on one's spending. With consumer prices climbing up here in Korea, the flex culture among our generation definitely seems to have faded out. Many young Koreans have transitioned from luxury good lovers and heavy buyers to modest and sometimes even frugal spenders. And did you guys notice such a change in consumption pattern these days? 
Uh, I remember uh, we were having a, a discussion a few months back on Korean millennial and Gen Z is crazed for luxury goods yeah. and their tendency to kind of flex rather than save up with their YOLO mindset. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's still that minor group who continue their pretentious behavior, but due to the soaring consumer prices, yeah. uh, many have tightened their belts. Um, I haven't asked my friends in person like whether their consu um, consuming behavior has changed, but for me personally, I felt the first impact uh, when the rising gas prices. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed bearable at first, but the overall increase in groceries, mortgage go loan, interest rates, and restaurants. I don't quite remember the last time I went shopping, which is something I do when I really want to spend my money. Yeah. And you know, making ends meet on a monthly basis doesn't give me the luxury to go out and spend I, as I used to uh, pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, you know, very ironic how all the prices seem to be going up except our wages. <laughs> mm, that's a very big argument that a lot of people, including myself, can agree to. Now, what about you now? Yeah, as much as we kind of showed the whole flex generation mm. aspect of uh, who we are, there's definitely a portion of us that has been keen on saving from the beginning because right. when millennials started jumping into the job market, there really wasn't a huge economic mm. growth. And we're constantly living in this anxiety for the future. And while generations before us would invest in real estate for the future, it's really hard to do that. So other people would kind of start off with what they already have, maybe dabble in a little bit of stock and some coins but even for those who are doing well financially they're constantly thinking about sustainability mm. and the future instead of the YOLO lifestyle yeah. I feel like that's becoming less and less of a trend and many of my friends who are married who have kids they always prioritize their needs versus wants and we want to buy the best of everything if it's possible but always thinking about do I need this or do I not need this is a really good way to save right and and as you guys mentioned, today we're going to dedicate our time to focus on how we spend and save up our money. And I think it has to do with many different socioeconomic factors uh, inevitably tightening our belt. Mm. So why don't you guys tell me the reasons behind such change in consumption behavior, especially among our generation? Obviously, you know, ongoing economic recession mm. and inflation is the main cause of reduced spending. But another factor we cannot overlook is climate change. Yeah. Um, all over the world, there were extended periods of torrential rain and abnormal temperatures mm -hmm. as many countries recorded the hottest summer in history. And uh, ironically, um, sadly, many climate experts say summer 2023 mm. could be the coolest summer we will ever experience for the rest of our lives. No. That is very sad. Mm. And this has directly affected the harvesting of agriculture, leading to rising prices of crops, vegetables, mm -hmm. and of course, fruits. So mm -hmm. even if we don't eat out as much, I mean, grocery shopping costs have also gone up, taking a toll on our expenses. Right. So I think many people are spending less, meaning obviously that they are saving less mm. because they're on a very tight budget at the moment. Yeah, from flexing all the way going to frugal spending. Mm -hmm. What are some other reasons behind that? Obviously, the wars and the attacks mm. going on in Europe and Middle East is not helping the current economic situation as the oil price is so unstable. And it's basically a global inflation. Everyone's mm -hmm. facing it. And it's directly affecting how much our food is costing. So is. we feel it. And it's not something that we can really cut down on, especially if you've been trying to save before that as well. And there's this thing called shrinkflation. We've talked about it yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Instead of marking the prices up, they would actually change the labels of the food perhaps it used to be 59 grams now it's 54 grams and people wouldn't really notice unless you looked really detailed but and who does that yeah <laughs> but then when you notice it doesn't feel good right it it's doesn't. not really warming up to the hearts of the consumers yeah. right now in this state it feels like you're being ripped off a little bit <laughs> it doesn't like blatantly say like how mm -hmm. many grams they reduced you just realize oh did my stomach get bigger or something <laughs> like yeah. why why isn't that there... as well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might be. Now, to better analyze the economic times we're living in and what we can do to become smarter consumers, let's include an expert in our talks. We'll include her right after this.
To better understand what to do in these economically difficult times, we're going to include an assistant professor from the Korea Development Institute School of Public Policy Management. It's Professor Lee Sa-yeon. Welcome back, Professor Lee. Hi, how are you? Now, Professor, we're going to go around and ask you a question each. I'll start. As we've mentioned till now, it's no longer surprising to hear that we're going through record inflation. Recently, the International Monetary Fund upwardly revised its inflation forecast here in Korea to 3.6% this year, and that's a 0.2 percentage point bump from their projection last month. So some people are worried that if we continue to see record inflation like this, Korea might fall into a financial crisis like the one in the late 1990s when we even had to borrow money from the IMF. Now, based on these concerns, how plausible do you think the scenario could be? So before I actually think about the plausibility of how much, how, you know, how plausible or how likely we can face those uh, big financial crises, uh, I think it's, it would be nice to have like a little bit of understanding of how the forecast of this inflation would be in the next few years. So high inflation has been largely moderated to around uh, meet 3% uh, by now. And it is uh, actually expected to decline gradually to about meet uh, 2% next year on average. And this, town, this uh, trend is helped by some negative output gap, slowing wage growth, as you mentioned, and restrictive monetary and fiscal policy. So um, about the uncertainty around the inflation, we still have some uncertainty. Uh, so as you already mentioned, global energy and food price increase, higher wage growth along with some higher inflation expectation could also delay the convergence of inflation to a target for some time. So about the likelihood of financial crisis, mm -hmm. it is actually very unlikely that the inflation level we see now leads to such a big scale financial crisis. So more adverse conditions like further tightening of global financial conditions, a flight to safety with a rapid appreciation of, you know, reserve currencies like the U.S. dollars needs to be met for such an extreme crisis event to materialize. Mm -hmm. However, the cost of this high inflation to ordinary people is not small, as you mentioned uh, um, previously. Definitely, we won't be able to, we won't be seeing a financial crisis, but it is definitely burdening our pockets at the moment. Kim, would you like to ask the second question? Uh, Professor Lee, uh, it's not just Korea that is seeing consumer prices rise. Um, why are we seeing such a spike in prices globally? Um, one of the key factors of global inflation is higher volatility of commodity prices. Actually, a uh, commodity price has become really volatile these days, and energy price increases uh, due to cuts from OPEC+. Plus. Food price remain very high, partly due to wars in Ukraine. And also, we're experiencing disruptions that are linked to climate change and extreme weather conditions as well. And the second factor is higher inflation expectation. Actually, we have seen uh, our expectation for the near-term inflation have risen well above the 2% target. And this uh, actually causes the path through from past relative price movement to the future you know, prices. So, um, and it has been found to be a very strong driver for a sustained high uh, inflation. So um, this one is, uh, you know, upcoming concerns for many of the policymakers, uh, I, I guess. For some countries like the U.S., actually, the glo uh, labor market tightness ha has been contributed to a rise in inflation as the labor cost can easily pass through to product and service you know, prices. I see. Professor, I'd like to ask you the last question. Um, how do you think in such global uh, economic trends, uh, how do you think it is affecting the spending and saving behaviors of our current generation and which do you, uh, which direction do you think it should head to? Um, yes, so uh, basically people are tightening their belts, you know, spending less and try to save more if they have some buffer. But given the persistent inflation trend, the central banks around the world will likely to keep their policy rate really high for some period. So um, therefore, if you have uh, by any chance any debts 
it would be wiser to reduce the level of your borrowing first. Mm. And then next about saving and other uh, investment options. So as the central bank increases the policy rates, savings can yield higher rates uh, compared to the pre-pandemic level. So if you have some buffer, you know, you can definitely go for saving, I guess. And to many other investment options, actually in inflation can be corrosive. So for example, fixed income investments like bonds will suffer from inflation, especially for the longer term, uh, you know, bonds. The effect of inflation on stock market is also not very clear. So sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. So it's really hard decision for, for, for younger generations, I guess. It definitely so, is. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's why I think we have to keep our eye on the economic trends and the monetary policies that officials will be rolling out soon. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Professor. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And to elaborate on our interview with Professor Lee just now, I think there's so many different ways we can try to save our money in a wiser way, but you have to definitely be have a good eye on the economy. But what are some other ways in our daily lives that our generation is being wise with spending or saving our money? Uh, you know, recently uh, the spending culture has kind of shifted, mm. putting more emphasis on cost effectiveness. Okay. Um, the biggest change can be seen in wedding preparations, mm. uh, as bridal showers and wedding photos are done at home or mm -hmm. organized between the couples. Um, and another notable spending change is in cosmetics. Mm. Products less than 5,000 Korean won, which is almost four US dollars, mm. are becoming popular among many youngsters. And obviously, big cosmetic manufacturers uh, have followed suit by releasing cost-effective products. Right. I think we're seeing a, ch a change in not only the market, but the way we're spending money. What mm -hmm. about you? Right. Some of the latest popular challenges online is the cash challenge. Yeah. If you've traveled here in Korea, you'll notice that Korea is one of the most convenient places mm -hmm. for using credit cards. So you can just go all throughout the day, months without seeing cash. I personally haven't touched cash more than twice <laughs> this entire year. And while it is so convenient and nice, it's kind of hard to keep track of where you're spending things and where things are going. So having a set amount of cash per day that you're allowed to spend is easier way to um, manage it. And I used to have this calendar with pockets where I would put a little bit of money per each day. And if I didn't spend it, I would move it into a different pocket, which would be savings. Mm -hmm. And there's also apps like walking apps, which can give you points apps that will save your receipts for you, apps that can show where you're spending, what percentage of the money you're spending in what places. So there's many different ways that we can kind of navigate this whole, I guess, we call it in Korea, teteku, which is an investment financially, mm -hmm. but now we call it epteku, so it's yeah. an app which will help you. So I don't know, I think we're trying to be really smart about it in our own way. Yeah. And I think this isn't new, like epteku or the ways we're trying to save up money, it's never new and I don't think it differs per generation. But we can say for sure that our generation is all about saving up money because as we mentioned before, our wages are staying the same, <laughs> shrinkflation is happening. So what better way to do that than share information as to be better Better, wiser consumers out there and we also asked our global viewers if they could share some interesting ways they save up money so here's what three of them had to say take a look at the screen to find out Tasmia said the younger generation cuts back on eating out and prefers walking over any transportation to reduce spending Rex says being content with what being content with what you have is the best antidote to overspending. Today's hyper-consumer society creates wants over non-essential things. Elaine in English says for those who smoke and drink, they can try to do it less. It will not only save them money, but keep them healthy. So I guess all our viewers have a great point there. It really depends on daily habits and changing that up to be, to be a better and wiser consumer, I guess. Now ending off, how would you guys like to see our generation better spend or save money from now on? You know, a few, few years back, um, during COVID, uh, many youngsters invested and somewhat gambled their savings on mm. stocks and cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And there was a short period uh, where during a bullish market where many people actually made large profit margins. Right. And sadly, you know, the greed got the better of them and they <laughs> started gambling more and ended up losing a lot of their initial investment. Mm -hmm including myself. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I think um, just growing a sense of uh, value in mm. the money they actually um, earned through a lot of hard work can really 
kind of perhaps change their perception of how they spend their money. Yeah. And in turn, maybe how they, you know, save up money as well. I agree. Mm. What about you now? So not just financially, but for the sake of environment as well. I hope that we become a little more sustainable, recycling and reusing a lot of the resources that we already do have and be a little less wasteful. And like one of our viewers was saying, need over want and really prioritize that. Really think about, do I really need this? Mm. It's so hard to think that way though. And I can empathize with all the viewers out there who are having a difficult time with that. I myself always do that. I binge eat and binge eat on desserts. It's hard to come back like from the flex generation. It's really hard to come back from the flex generation. So if I share my own tip is I write down my daily spending. Mm. I try doing that. Really? Yeah, instead of wow. using my phone, I write it down because it's so arduous. And every mm -hmm. single time I write it down, I realize, wow, I spent this much. You feel debt. shame. <laughs> I feel the shame. I have to go through the shame game. But I think that's helping me in order to better orchestrate how I'm using my money at once. And these are all the tips that we have for you today. Hope you can take them into account. In the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Park ki -hoon. Always a pleasure. And Elsa. No problem. All right, and thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.